doing that. Uh, PhD students uh, who couldn't come, unfortunately. Um, okay. So uh, the idea of this of this work is to try to take ideas from experimental psychology and adapt them to uh, aim at, at measuring perception biases and adapt them to AI. So I'd like to try a, 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 a small experiment just to give you a sense of what kind of experiments these are. So how many of you, so, so look at the screen and there are two tables here. So how many of you think that table one is bigger? Is the biggest, no? How many of you think that table two is the biggest? Okay, what about table one? No? Well, I would assume that, that most people are like, I'm certain I've never tried an experiment of this size. So uh, what happens a lot of the time is that um, people uh, think that table two is bigger, but in fact they are of the same size. And the only thing that I'm doing here, I'm just um, doing a simple translation and rotation, and they are of the same size. So what happens here is that people have a perception bias, and as soon as they see something that looks like a table, because uh, they immediately do um, a, a perspective estimation, and they think that because of the configuration of the uh, table one, that table must be bigger. But in fact, the, the, the blue shapes are exactly the same. Uh, so the hypothesis of this work is, is uh, whether we can take ideas from, um, from uh, psychophysics, more specifically, a very old uh, field in, in experimental psychology, almost 100 years or more old, and adapt them to measure uh, biases. And more specifically, in this work, we adapt, adapt perhaps the most common experimental psychologists a uh, technique called uh, the two alternative force choice task to measure two things, the amount of bias in a decision, perceptual bias, and the strength of that bias. In the paper, if you, uh, I invite you to read it completely, we measure two kinds of biases, biases in the output of a system and biases in, on the input of the system, conditions on some de desired output. So in this talk, I'm gonna focus only on the bias in the output and, and, the, uh, and this set of techniques um, all assume that this, uh, is the, that this AI system is, um, is a black box. Of course, we're not, we not the first ones uh, to think about these ideas, and, and uh, probably you're familiar with the, the work of Khalis Khan, where um, she proposed uh, to adapt the implicit association task, which is typically um, a psycho psychological task that was introduced around um, uh, 20 years ago to measure bias in word embeddings. A um, couple of years ago, DeepMind introduced another similar idea where you have uh, a virtual environment where you use, when you put, where you put your um, artificial agents and they make decisions just like as, as, as humans. And other people have also proposed ways of kind of taking these analogies or interrogating or, or thinking about AI systems as subjects and asking questions about them, but they generally require um, detailed knowledge of what's happening inside. So in this work, um, we will take a, a technique that is relatively old uh, and uh, very well developed in our, um, psychophysics, and it's called the two alternative force choice task. And the idea is basically to define some sort of dimension where we can uh, change the stimulus so that uh, we change the decisions of the subjects. So um, in the example that I showed you before, with the tables, that will be KC, what I showed you on the big screen before. Um, people typically tend to judge table one, the one to the left, as bigger than table uh, two, even though they are of the same size. So what we do, we, we modify the height in this case so that we, we change the decision. And you can see in stimulus A, uh, people tend to judge table, the, the right table as bigger. So we change, we switch the decision. And the idea is to modify that so we, we produce a function called psychometric curve, and we extract two things of, uh, from this curve. We extract the point at which both stimuli, stimuli look the same, so that's the point of subjective equivalence, and the second thing that we extract is the strength of that, of that uh, curve, essentially the steepness, and that's the, what's called the just noticeable difference. Okay, so in psychophysics, people talk about perceptual biases where the point of subjective equivalence essentially doesn't line up with what we'd expect as, as uh, uh, psychophysicists. Basically, uh, stimulus C, they have um, objectively the same area, but they perceive that uh, uh, stimulus B actually have the same area, so there is a bias there. 
Okay, so we take this idea and we apply it to war embeddings and we would like to basically reproduce the results that other people have shown before with respect to, um, sorry, with occupations. Okay, so we take war embeddings of occupations and basically we would like to reproduce the sense that, okay, a male, uh, an electrician is perceived more as a male occupation than a female occupation, whereas a receptionist is perceived more as a female occupation than a, than a, than a male occupation. So what we do, we formulate a relatively simple uh, question and answer, question and answering system with word embeddings, and you can see more details in the paper. And basically we do the following. We create an artificial task where we ask the system, what is the gender of this uh, electrician? And, and we, we show the electrician, and show here means that we do like a, a linear combination of the embeddings. We're essentially blurring the gender of the electrician. So we're showing someone that looked like an electrician with a voltage meter, but it's unclear whether it's male or female. And basically by changing the mixture component, we can get a psychometric curve. And here I'm showing for the example of, uh, of the electrician occupation that we would have expected the, the, uh, the switch between perceiving the electrician as male or female to be exactly a 50-50%. Uh, but there is a small shift, so that means that there is small, um, uh, non-trivial bias. Okay, so, um, so we uh, took all the occupations from, that have been done for these uh, kinds of studies, and, um, and we uh, basically reproduce uh, things that people have, uh, have shown before. Um, so this is sorted by the bias, so here more to the right means, on the left um, plot means that there is a bias against men, so let's say hairdresser will be the most perceived female occupation, whereas advisor and administrator will be the most perceived women occupation, sorry, men occupation. Um, and to the right, we also uh, measure the strength of the bias, so basically the smaller this value, um, the, the uh, less strength is in the, in the perception. And we uh, validate this uh, result with um, uh, the labor statistics and, and uh, you can see the details on the paper. So um, we think that a lot of, I mean this is a very exciting uh, community. For me, I have a background in computer science and also psychology, but a lot of the stuff that we're trying to measure like bias and, and uh, there, are, there are like new ways of measuring these, these things, but I think we can bor borrow a lot of the of language and history and rich literature from things like experimental psychology to, to talk about these, these, these concepts. And we hope to expand these ideas in the future to not just detect biases, but fix them. And please, uh, I invite you to visit GitHub repo where all the code to reproduce the results can be found. Thank you very much.